Not a Ghost of a Chance. That is my talk. And I'm so pleased to be here. Thank you for coming. I'm really excited. Yeah. yeah. And, and I really like how uh, Ross answered questions because it's a small group. I have no problem with that. So stick your hand up. I am a teacher, remember, so I will see you. I hope. First thing I want to do, though, is tell you a little bit of a story that I had, an actual ghost, an organic ghost story. And I want to, um, you to imagine that it's dark outside. I know it's quite bright in here. And I lived in this house in the, a small town, a very small Canadian town called Cranbrook. And it's the only town that I've ever known that says that cool things are fair and neat. So, you know, a little bit of local lore. And across the street from my family home, imagine this, it's dark out, nighttime, middle of the night, across the streets of forest where the Sasquatch is hanging out. And I, I, it, while this picture really evokes that sentiment, this is the actual house that we're talking about. <laughs> and just to get, improve the mood a little bit, I thought I'd better darken it up a little bit and make it a little bit spookier. Now, the arrow is where my bedroom was. So you can see there's a walkway right outside my bedroom door. I was sound asleep, and suddenly I was woken up with a sound, and it went thump, thump, thump. And I was about five or six years old at this time, and I jumped up, looked out the window, peeked out the cracks, nothing there. So my pre-science brain was going, what if I was dreaming? not bad for a five or six year old. So I went back to bed, fell back to sleep, woken up again with thump, thump, thump. Looked outside, nothing there. But just to make it more imaginative, I, I added a ghost just for you. And I screamed at this point, because at this point I'm thinking ghost, and I ran to my parents', my parents room. My mom was only there, my dad was working night shift at a place called Skookum Chuck. So those of you who listen to the Skeptic Zone will know that word. And she was also freaked out. She also heard these footsteps. So we huddled together in bed until, the, until we finally fell asleep with great difficulty, waiting for my dad to return from work. And here's a picture of me. And <laughs> yeah, I was cute. What happened? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm glad you're noticing some anomalies in here. Oh, yeah, this is a very old photo uh, I got from my mom. And yeah, so I'm going to, this is our brand new home. My dad built it, actually. And we're thinking, oh, no, or, you know, is this a haunted house? Right from the beginning, this is a brand new home. I thought this only happened in old homes, but apparently new homes. So I just want you to keep an eye a little bit on something a little bit mysterious in that corner. Uh, I added a few things called Photoshop. <laughs> it's not very hard, and I'm not very good. I did this very quickly. Uh, I'm not great at it, but you can see it's not bad. There's a little woman there. So was it destined to be haunted from the beginning? And what could it possibly explain these strange footsteps that both my mom and dad heard. And just so you know, I learned later that my mom, of course, thought, this is not a ghost. She thought it was a man walking outside our house. Way more frightening. Way more frightening, right? So she was terrified, but for a very different reason. And so my dad comes home, and we actually discovered what this was. Remember I said it was an organic ghost story? Well, well back in the days, that, <laughs> you like my ghost? Uh, we used to buy big sacks of potatoes from a local farm. And they had put the sack on the landing by the kitchen, and it fell over in the night and proceeded to empty down the stairs. Thump, thump, thump. So that's been our, our favorite ghost story of our family for a very long time. And our stories match up perfectly because, you know, we've got a collective memory of it now, except for one thing. My parents say, or my mom says, it was thump, 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 thump. No, I think that might be more accurate. <laughs> but my little brain, it was thump, thump, thump. And I want to thank Brian Dunning from, uh, I keep doing that right, that better? Brian Dunning for the organic idea. That's what he called it, my organic ghost story. So who believes in ghosts? Well, according to ipsos.com, in June of 2021, in Canada, 
46% of people believe in supernatural beings existing, as in ghosts and etc. So I was quite horrified to learn this when, because I grew up in a family that didn't obviously believe in ghosts. Yes. Supernatural beings, does that include angels and fairies and stuff like that as well? I, I believe it does. It was not clear in the research that I did, but uh, it, they, they, it was an article about ghosts. Okay. So either they misrepresented it, but I did try to dig out what exactly the question was, and it was really hard for me to find. So it's a great question. And, uh, but I was more horrified to learn, because I live in Alberta, of all our provinces in Canada, Alberta has 57% belief in ghosts or spiritual beings and next door neighbor British Columbia has the lowest in Canada. How do you, how does that happen? I don't know. So what about the US? Well, 1990, we have a Gallup poll and this is from a New York Times article and it says there was a question and it was, what is it? Oh, yeah, ghosts, 25% uh, said they believe that ghosts or spirits of dead people can come back in certain places and situations. Much more specific. And this was in 1990. So they did the exact same question again in 2005. What do you think happened to the number? Yep. 32% it went up to. You know, it's a growth. It's not a huge growth, but not too bad. But then they did another survey in 2019. But this time they asked a different question. So, you know, when we don't have consistent questions, we can get different results, just so you know. And I'm sure you're aware of that. So the question was, do you believe in ghosts? So it's a lot more broad. And it was 46%. So now we're up to the Canada rate. So you guys in Canada, we're all the same. <laughs> and the next thing I want to go into is what is the difference between spirit and ghost photography? When I was researching this, I really had trouble parsing this out. But I was lucky to find a uh, book by Joe Nickel called The Science of Ghosts, Searching for Spirits of the Dead. And he says that the difference is spirit photography started with the spiritualist movement, which was mostly the 1840s through to the 1920s. Fox sisters, some of you will be familiar with. So that's when we call spirit photography. It tended to be studios, seances. It was staged to get these spirit photos. And it was used for fraudulent purposes. So you would have people come over, my husband died, and they would take a photo and husband would magically appear behind. And I'll show you some examples. Whereas ghost photography, that's our modern day stuff that happens, we go to haunted places. And they can be purposely fraudulent and they often are accidental and we're looking for artifacts. So here's a difference, two different photos. I always find these really interesting. I used a ghost photo app for that one over there. And there's sort of a ghost over my one shoulder. That was 2022, I took this. Versus an 1899 image of a staged ghost. I think it's much more beautiful, that 1899 one. And as we've gotten our amazing technology that you can see right behind us here, our pictures have gotten worse, just like UFO pictures. I always find that really interesting. But I'm going to start with some spirit photography history. The first thing, the first type of camera where publicly available photography happened was called, and I'm going to have trouble with this, the daguerreotype. Oh, I think I got it. Which was introduced in 1839, so a long time ago. And here is a picture of Lincoln, and he's going to be a common thread within my talk. And this is taken with this camera. And early photographers actually recognized the possibility of fraudulent ghost photos early on because they were having fun. And it, for example, they would pose people in front of glass or behind glass, and then they would have an image like this. And when I'm traveling, I, um, this is how I get photos of myself because otherwise I'm not going to appear in any photos because nobody else is taking them. So there's my ghost. I think that's pretty fun. But here we have one, and it was really not until glass plate photography happened, which started around 1859, that we started to see this fraudulent ghost photography starting to happen. And what was, if you remember, the exposures were long. Shutter speeds had to be open for a long time. If people moved, they're blurry. 
And that's what this is here. This is a person who was studying the movement of horses, and they were long exposures. And he, he did not say they were ghost photos. He was actually doing research into animal movement. He took insect, pictures of insects, horses, all kinds of animals. So it was used for really good scientific purposes. Another thing that actually contributed to the rise of spirit photography was the end of the American Civil War in 1865, and it, because it left a lot of people grieving, and they were looking out to reach for their dead relatives that they often never got to bury. And then, there, of course, there was the spiritualist movement that actually went on until the 1920s, as I mentioned, popularized by the Fox sisters. Now, remember I talked about long exposures? This is a modern-day long exposure. When I really got into this spirit photography stuff, I was astounded that these people were claiming ghosts when these are well-known photographic artifacts. You leave your exposure open. So I had my camera on a tripod here. This is in Dublin on a rainy night. And the people, you can see there's solid people, real people, intermixed with spirits. Mm -hmm. The ones that are semi-transparent. And those are just people who are moving. Well, the, the shutter is open. That's it. There's nothing to it. And I'm, people are making money off this? And yes, they are. They're selling these as real ghost photos. And I'm going to show you one pretty soon. Let's go back in time again. William Mumler is probably the most well-known spirit photographer. Got some nods out there. And this is him with his cousin, who died 12 years prior to this picture. So you can see the outline in the background. How does that happen? Well, they discovered it. I think he discovered it quite accidentally. You just don't clean the glass plate between photographs, and it leaves an outline of the person. So he would take pictures of old photographs, and then not clean the plate all the way, take a new photo, and you get this effect. And uh, he, Mumler was actually an American jewelry engraver, but he became more successful as a spirit photographer, made a lot more money. This is his most famous photo. You recognize uh, this person? Yeah, Abraham Lincoln behind Mary Todd, his wife. And she was a spiritualist, so this was big, a big deal for her. However, it was determined that his spirits were the result of cap capturing the double exposures I talked about because he didn't clean his plates properly. And he was charged in 1869 with fraud. But he was qu acquitted, even though they got a witness from one of his dead, he was a spirit, but the person was still alive. So the person was alive, they still said, no, not guilty. And also, if you notice this fellow over here, that's P.T. Barnum. He testified against Mumbler, and he recreated the Lincoln photo. And you can't see it very well, it's not a very good, you can see it well enough. So he did recreate the Lincoln ghost to show in court, still got off which is really unfortunate. And they use that actually in the Winchester Mystery House. Well, he got off, so maybe they're real. Yeah. So another spirited fraudster was Edouard Bouguet, or Bouguet, actually, who was a French photographer who would wrap dolls in gauze and attach photos of faces on them and then take photos. So he wasn't a particularly uh, good. This is probably one of his best ones I saw. Most of them look very fake. He was actually arrested in fraud, for fraud in 1875 in Paris, and he made a full confession. This is William Hope. Some of you may know of him. And he's the most famous spirit photographer from the early 20th century. And people like Harry Price, who you may know of, who's a British psychic researcher, he tried to expose him? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> uh, sometimes, I, sometimes I get it. Uh, so what, <laughs> and so what, what he and another fellow did is they put x-ray markings on the plates they gave to William Hope. And William Hope returned the plates with a ghost on the photo. And the plate did not have that x-ray mark, so they knew that he had switched the plates out. He, they knew he was a fraud. However, a very well-known person who wrote Sherlock Holmes, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, he came to his rescue and said, no, 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 he's not a fraud, and everybody believed him. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people did. Guess some things never do change. And 
eventually spirit photography did die down by the 1920s, partly because of this guy. Anyone know who that is? Houdini. Houdini, exactly. And here he is again, Lincoln. And this was a rec another recreation that was done by Houdini, showing the ghost of Lincoln, how it's done. And so with these people keeping doing this over and over again, eventually it died down. So let's move on to ghost photography because it comes back in another form. Now you look at this, ghost photography, look at that lovely photo. Isn't it clear, beautiful, wonderful? <laughs> and it comes, most of them fall into two categories. They're either hazy or transparent, transparent because of the long exposure, hazy because it's dark, blurry, camera shutter speed's not good enough, or they are orbs. And we're going to talk about orbs in a second. Now this fellow is uh, quite... I found him via Kenny Biddle. People know who Kenny Biddle is? Yeah, okay, awesome. If you don't look him up, he's, uh, his stuff is really great. He does lots of stuff about ghosts. And there's a lot of ghost photography books out there, unfortunately. How to take pictures of ghosts, how to find ghosts. And this is one of them. And Tim Scullion, he has a website that actually says this about his books, that he has been doing this for eight years, and he's taken over 22,000 photographs, and he has produced the world's first groundbreaking photographic study of ghosts, and here is the book. You should run off and get it. And then he published two more. So you can buy three altogether. <laughs> and here is an example. I actually started going to his Facebook page. This is from his Facebook page. He took the photo in 2020. And he posted on Facebook, here are, um, he calls himself a ghostographer, by the way, <laughs> which I think is quite clever. I'll give him credit for that one. And he posted this photo on Facebook on July 5th, 2020, with the caption, quote, I was asked to show the ghost in the photo for those that cannot zoom in. So here's the first crop showing the ghost at the far right of the house. And I think you can all see the ghost, and I think you all know what it is, probably. Right? I mean, uh, well, then I'll do this. Now, can you see it? Oh, <laughs> ah, yeah, no, down here. So, any ideas? You want to go see the other one? Oh, your head. Oh, my head was in the way. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Good thing I did this then. I anticipated that problem. I am psychic. And <laughs> so, yeah. So, any ideas what that could be? I, I it looks. They had put on a longer exposure. Yeah. yeah. It's nighttime, longer or exposure. Or it could be a ghost. That is an option. We always. What's that? The ghost has. Oh, it does. Yes. Look at that. There is, oh, I didn't. Oh, it has a shadow. <laughs> oh, it could be. There you go. Could be for another object. Oh, it could looks, almost looks like a light standard, doesn't it? Or light. It looks like. Oh, yeah, it's from the porch. Yeah, I think it's from the porch. Porch, yes. It's from here. Yeah. Yeah, but good idea. Yeah. And so here's my, my first thing I said to him was, was this a long exposure? Oh, no. And he even sent me the settings so he could sound really important. Here's my settings. And I tried to be charitable. I'm thinking maybe he's telling the truth because there's lots of ways this could be done. And the other way is photo stacking. And this is done by landscape photographers all the time. They take 30 photos of the same scene from a tripod of a, of a waterfall. But they want that nice streaky water, right? So it's nice. It's not... Every, you can't see every droplet. They don't want that. They want it to be fluid. And so they'll stack 30, 40, 50 photos one over the other. And then it give in Photoshop or other apps. And it gives the illusion of moving. And so I asked him, is, is that what you did. Did you do some photo stacking? And I've tried it myself and it looks pretty ghostly. It's pretty fun. And he deleted my comment and I forgot to screenshot it. <laughs> so maybe I got it right. <laughs> oh, yeah, me and my walking around, I'm always going to trip. And yeah, so the other possibility in this day and age, this was a few years ago, but AI right now is incredible. I just go into Photoshop, I circle something and tell them what to put in, and it comes up. Those ghosts that I put in before, I didn't pay attention to edging because, you know, there's time. And it wasn't 
bad. So this, I think mine was better than, better than his. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's not hard. However, and I want to show you some more. These are real ghost photos. See, I've, I've, this is on his website, real ghost photos. And look at how terrible the photos are. They're awful. They're at night. There's really high contrast, so there's bright lights and darkness and movement, obviously. But he's gotten better. I went to his website and his Facebook page. These are his most recent. <laughs> but they're way better. I think they're way nicer. They're actually almost artistic. You know, the other ones are just crap. Like, what? So, and he sells these. He sells these, he tells people they're real. There's people all over his Facebook page going, wow, these are amazing. And so I'm wondering, either he practice has paid off, or he's figured out AI, or maybe both. It could be a combination of both. So another one I want to talk about, I'm going to get crossover from ghost photography into psychics, because there is a lot. We've come across some psychics who use ghost photography in their readings so-called ghost photography, and I'll talk more about that. And you can, can you see the ghost? <laughs> Barely, it's more like legs. And if you can't see it, I circled it there. There's apparently a dog there as well. I have never been able to see the dog. This is Kenny, Kenny Biddle, he wrote the, about this. So you can go and check out the article if you want more details. But obviously a long exposure, that's my guess. I don't think Jeanette Wilson knows about photo stacking. That's a guess as well. Here's some more ghosts. Can you see them? These are orbs. <laughs> so, yeah, so we're into the orbs. I, I briefly mentioned them earlier. You can see them up in the corner if you're having trouble seeing them because I've got old eyes. There we go. I pointed them out to you. Now, these ones are mischievous and evil spirits. Evil. Versus these orbs in this picture. Oh, you'll see. No, no, there's orbs. I'll show them to you. If you can see them, you look for them. They're just a lot smaller. She didn't blow this picture up like she did the previous one. So there are orbs, and these, these orbs are the spirits of the children's dead grandparents. Of course. Of course. <laughs> so there they are. If you can't, those are some of them. I didn't. I didn't want to circle all of them. There's a lot in there, and these are old, older photos. And so, how do you tell the difference? How are these ones lovely grandparents versus the evil ones of the previous picture? Nice, firm, defined edges, like you see here, are the good ones. The blurry edges around the other ones that have been blown up from a crappy photo, those are evil spirits. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. <laughs> what you learn at Skeptic Camp. <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> and what's really funny, and this is not my favorite photo, but the reason that I like this photo is because I discovered when I was hiking in Banff National Park, I had a happy spirit following me. I don't know if you can see it. There is an orb in this photo. It's not in any of my, I took a whole bunch of photos at this exact location on a tripod. This is the only one that has it. Here, I'll help you out. There it is. Oh. Wow. <laughs> it's, it, it looks like a cloud, but it's in none of my other photos from the same place. So I know it's not a cloud. And then if you really, fo you can see, you see it's a nice, round, friendly spirit. It's a friendly one, so it's okay. I was quite happy to have it along. Now, what can cause this? Those in photography will know exactly what this is. And this is why I was, when I, I've been doing photography fairly seriously since about 2005-ish time. And I had never thought anything about these. I knew what they were. What are they? Well, it's when you have dust particles or bugs or fluff or snow, whatever it is, and it comes close to the lens and the light hits it. Often with flash photography, you get them. Those are, that's probably what happened in the previous examples with Jeanette Wilson. However, this is showing an, a daylight example where it can happen. The only one of my pictures that has it is this one, probably. <laughs> yeah, either real or a bug flew by or a piece of dust, like there's fluff flowing in nature all the time, so, and it flew right by the lens. 
Um, now, I'm going to get into this. I just discovered this recently. This is Gettysburg Ghost Pictures, a group by Taz Paranormal. And without joining the group, I can't really say what they make money at. But there were indications that they sell paranormal equipment, you know, like EMF readers and things like that. They have ghost tours and they have excursions. So that's, pro I'm guessing, where they get their, make their money. But what was fascinating to me was they posted a photo. I, remember the quality of those 18th century or 19th century photos? It was really beautiful. So here we go, modern day ghost photo. And this is a photo by Barb Fisher. And uh, can you see ghosts? No. no. Unless they're wood assorted. They can... And you, does everybody here know what anomaly hunting is? So you find a picture, and then you look for strange things, and then you say ghost. You know, don't think of other explanations, etc. Alien, yeah, we can say aliens. Some people will say aliens. Some of these look more like aliens, maybe. But I want to see what you guys think. You see something? Maybe? You see Bigfoot. Oh, I love that. <laughs> All right. So, with <laughs> so when I went on this site, it had just been posted, and very quickly there were 60 comments and 60 people blowing up parts of this photo trying to find these anomalies. So here's the first one. Wait, what? Yeah. And they circled it in, in light blue, but I, don't know, I can't see it. Maybe I just don't have the right imagination. That's what it is. Here's another one. Wait, what? <laughs> she says it very well. I don't have to say anything. How about, how about this one? Bigfoot. There we go. There's Bigfoot. <laughs> it's a foot. Yeah. Yes. Yes, they do. Exactly the same thing. And then we have this one. It's a stick. It's a, it's, red, it's a red circle. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's some, some funny tinging of... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then there's this one. I think you get the idea. There's more. This is not all of them. There are more. And they went all over the photo trying to find exactly where these ghosts were at Gettysburg. They're everywhere. So I thought, here's some... I want to show you the comments. They're very fun. So is there someone left of the two green trees? Great catch. Thanks. <laughs> Looks like someone sitting on the ground looking at the grave. What grave? <laughs> Bigfoot's in the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Ross has the winning comment. It was a grave error. <laughs> oh, that's great. And to the right of the green tree up the hill is another one. Here we go again. Oh, thank you. I see it now. There is some strange blurring. Ooh, surprise. You're blowing it up. But I'm not sure what it could be. It could be blurring because you blew it up. You know, it could be real simple. And then there's this one. I see this one and this one. And the one by the tree. Yep. I can see the man's face and hat. And I rarely see anything in the pictures online. Oh, I don't think I've got good imaginations. I'm looking at the other figure ghost or real person at the top of the hill in white. And there was also mention of somebody holding a gun and all kinds of things. Finally, somebody like me, and obviously you guys, who can't find a thing. I see nothing in this pic. However, the su for some reason, this scene sends shivers up my spine. <laughs> <laughs> And I can't see anything in this pic either. Yay. And, oh, there's the gun one. Looks like he's pointing the gun right at you. Can you circle it? Because I don't see anything. <laughs> and believe it or not, a skeptic came in. Not me. Somebody else. Your brain is playing tricks on you. It's a common thing with humans. Our brains are constantly scanning for patterns, particularly human faces. It's the same phenomena as seeing things in cloud formations or the silhouettes of trees. Bravo. He nailed it. And, and, and in fact, yeah, or she. I don't remember, he or she. And uh, then, but then the next comment just, I mean, 
I usually don't see anything in these photos. I didn't even scan the photo, and instantly I saw this face and body. Trust me, my mind is not playing any tricks on me. I know what I see. <laughs> and then they ask this person why they're there if they don't believe, which is really too bad, because that was a good faith comment, and then they kind of ganged up and said, go away, which was really too bad. Right. So, final comparison between old and new. <laughs> Real life, I don't know, I think you get the idea. And unfortunately, as I talked about before, psychics are involved. I have no issue with people who want to play with ghost photography. I have done it myself. I think it's really cool. I've done it at Halloween with my nieces and nephews to have a sort of a fiery thing with their blurry faces and they look ghostly and the kids love it. I think it's a great artistic way of showing how photography works as well as just having fun with some good ideas. And I, I, what I don't like is when psychics use it and when people sell it and they're selling fear and fear selling fear is harmful i get this asked all the time why are you worried about ghosts ghosts is the low-hanging fruit and it, it is a low-hanging fruit for many people for my family for me but now i realize that people really believe this stuff i have a relative a very close relative who when i started investigating this i found out actually does believe in this stuff and can it be harmful? Yes, and I think it's really great. This is a really good example of the harm. Kenny Biddle wrote about this recently, called Investigating a Ghost Boy in Canada. This woman was afraid to be in her house because she thought it was haunted because of belief in ghosts, and she brought in a psychic who said, yes, there are evil spirits. What's the logical next step for many of these psychics? Hey, hand me over some money, I'll get rid of the curse. And then they still have these phenomena continuing to happen because whatever the reason may be, Kenny, read the article. He finds out exactly what is going on. It's really good. I don't have time today to go, but check it out. <laughs> Finally, a real ghost photo of me. <laughs> Isn't it good? <laughs> idea what app I use for this? Yes, yeah, Snapchat. So Snapchat actually has an add-on that does spooky crap like this. It's awesome. I had so much... Yeah, yeah. So it's, and I think it's one, of the, it's one of the best ones, don't you think? I mean, that's really good. And there were tons. There were two, over 250 apps in 2014 that would do stuff like this. And they often take pictures from movies, ghosts and goblins from movies, and then put them in the app. And it's really fun. I, th I, I like it. But don't say it's real. Yeah, I'll trip. I probably will. I always do that. So let's just have some fun. This is the, the one that I liked. I really liked Add Ghost to Photo. It's really easy to use. And it, it was fun. And it's really fun around Halloween. You send these little photos to, to your friends. And they're readily available. But what I don't like... Well, let's do one more. What I don't like is that it is often used by pub owners, hotels, and ghost hunting tours to sell their product. And they say they're real. And that's problematic, in my view. If they say, hey, you know, come on over, we are, we're supposedly haunted, and look at these ghosts, but I used an app, I'd be quite fine with that. I think it's just as fun, but that's me. Maybe that some people it loses the appeal for. I think it's a really fun idea to go. I envy Kenny Biddle. He goes and sleeps in haunted places all the time, and I think it's cool. So if you want to learn more about spirit and ghost photography, check out my Wikipedia page that I rewrote a few years ago. <laughs> and I can't do any talk without promoting the girl of skepticism on Wikipedia project. Including, I'm proud to be a member of the Dirty Mole Rat Society. 
And I'm still waiting for part of that $7 million that you apparently have. <laughs> I can help myself to mail duds. So here's my spooky stats. So these are the four Wikipedia pages that are spooky related. And I have, as of last week, so it's going to have gone up this week, 1.7 million views to those pages. It's, <laughs> thank you. It's so important to have good, solid information on these pages so that people who are on the fence, we're not going to change the people that are full in. When people are on the fence, they can go to the Wikipedia page and find out how it's done. And I think that's so important. And if you look at the, my most popular right now is Haunted House, or it was. Winchester Mystery House has 720,000. And I wrote that one in 2022 versus 2020 for the Haunted House one. And it has now surpassed Haunted House. Winchester is a huge one. Sarah Winchester's pretty big. Spirit photography is pretty big. These are my top four of all the pages I've done. So it is important to not ignore the low-hanging fruit. That's my... <laughs> Thank you so much.